Welcome to the Guac Podcast, episode 5. This one's on fine art and moving to the city, with me, Amber Bardell, and the lovely Alicia Benson from Sketchpad Pod. Did you do that little drawing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lion eh? It's very, um, Matisse. Yeah. Little yeah. naked lady. Yeah. <laughs> I did a really nice design and I was like, this will be a great liner. <laughs> and then it just didn't print very well, which was really disappointing. No, I mean, it, but that one's like yeah. one of the best ones. And I'm like, from a distance, it looks good. Yeah. <laughs> from here, yeah. it looks good. Good. Cool, cool. Great. So let's start. Love um, it. I'm Amber. Should know me by now. I'm one of the hosts. Um, but yeah, if you don't know who I am, you can check out the first podcast. And I'm here with Alicia. Hi, yeah, I'm um, Alicia. Yeah, and um, we're going to talk today a bit about um, moving to the city. We both moved to London for university. Yeah, I've um, known Amber since sixth form college. Yeah, so, so we went to college few years now. And um, yeah, basically what it's like that kind of change and like pursuing a creative pathway and also kind of mental health in that and our own experiences and then yeah just like our creative work a bit as well yeah. and um Alicia also has her own podcast which we're going to talk about a bit yes later on. I do uh it's called the sketchpad pod I'm sure we'll we'll talk about it a bit more but um basically it's all about uh, art, creativity and pop culture and it's done um, with my cousin Anna as well so fun stuff and uh, that's kind of why we're filming this episode as yeah. well because we wanted to make sure we start off the Grack podcast by uh, filming like at least one every season we want to eventually be recording all of them I think but uh, yeah because um, the sketch pad pod is a a video podcast as well as an audio one and so today obviously we're um, making some artwork um, which is what we would normally do we'll sit down have a cup of tea uh, make some art it doesn't always go well but um, it's just a nice sort of uh, thing to be doing while discussing creative related things so exactly so yeah, welcome opportunity for you yeah. to sit down with my inks and do a squiggle. Exactly. <laughs> when you're doing art as a more serious or professional thing during the day, it's quite nice to just um, go back to the more therapeutic modes of art, which is kind of what I find when I sit down to do something like this, which is just a little bit more fun. Um, and I do not have a plan, so... Yeah, me neither. We like that. This is kind of like, I started doing this a while back. I've just got this pot of Indian ink, which I really like using inks. But I just decided to not even use a brush. I just use the actual like pipette. Oh. So you can get some fun fair. shapes from that. Yeah. So that's quite nice. I got really into using um, quink ink oh, yeah, after I like quink college. Well. Um, and I just like the kind of bluey tones that you can yeah, create, it's especially really nice. when you add some water. But I've never gone straight from the pipette you're risking it today <laughs> yeah, that's nice well i'm just i'm using some oil paints and i've been currently focusing on um the the square in abstract art um kind of to do looking at the idea of the picture plane um and it came off the idea of like the instagram square frame okay so um, I'm gonna try and do some sort of square pattern thing, but this is a lot more loose and just fun than. So yeah, you should give us some background on what you're doing at uni then. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more background on on me and what I do. So um, I'm currently studying fine art at Central Saint Martins. I'm in my first year, and um, I. I do a mix of things. I've always quite enjoyed abstract art, um, but also I've recently been exploring uh, soft sculpture and just bringing some textiles into my work. Um, and I like looking at kind of themes of nostalgia and memory and childhood um, and the sort of the emotive aspect of what art can mean to you. So, yeah, that's 
that's what I've been doing. And um, more recently, we've we've been doing like induction things, but um, we finally got our studio space, and uh, I'm trying to get back into the habit of making making some definite artwork and. Um, yeah, just trying to progress my practice at the moment. Yeah. yeah, so how how did you get there? How did I get to the CSM? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um I took I took art GCSE um and I was actually not even thinking of taking art A level. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I don't think I've told you this one no. but basically. Um I had a new uh, art teacher for my final year of GCSE and um, at some point I was like yeah I'm, I'm not I'm not taking art uh, A-level I just don't really think it's for me and he was like no no you go <laughs> go see Godalming College's art department and then tell me you're not taking art A-level and of course I went and we were we were really lucky that the college we went to had an amazing art department mm. and I saw it and I was just like oh gosh I think I'm taking art so um and I'm so happy I did um it was really tough going at points like um yeah demanding the, subject very demanding um especially at a level they expect just to, the sheer content of work is so high mm. um and obviously you want to be making like high quality work as well so it's that can be quite difficult um and so coming up to the the end of A-levels, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I'd also um, started taking History of Art, uh, which, which is, is where we met. Which yeah. is where we met. We were in the same art history class. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to pursue that as a degree or whether to do art, because I think it's quite scary just saying, you know, out loud to the world, I'm, I'm going to be an artist, I'm going to mm. try and do this. Um, and obviously, as much as my parents were supportive there was also like hesitation in yeah um is this the a lucrative pathway to be going down um but so I went to do an art foundation which is a free course to try and make up my mind and I just fell more and more in love with um doing art every day mm. and it being like an integral part of my life um and I still very much um love art history and uh, I think I might revisit that later. But yeah, I I went ahead. I applied for fine art courses, and I knew that I wanted to come to London because it is like one of the top places to study art. Um, and, and also for us, it's like not that far from home. Not that far from home. Um, and you know my family and I are very close so I would have I did actually apply to Leeds but just even on the drive up there I was like this is way too far I can't do yeah. it um so I was I was really lucky I um I got uh, an interview at CSM I actually got rejected from Goldsmiths so I didn't even get an interview um but that's just how it goes with London yeah. uni it's like they they have a specific um, type of person or type of art that they're looking for and if you don't quite fit it that year then you're not you're not going to get in and it's very highly competitive um, but yeah CSM saw something and uh, I went into the interview it was the fastest interview of my life really yeah <laughs> and, uh, actually yeah I mean they must have a lot of applicants yeah a lot yeah. a lot um, they always like to tell us that they could fill a room five like five rooms Mm. Um, with the amount of people that applied. Um, just so to they, freak you out. Yeah, just to put the pressure on. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, so the the interview went well, I guess, because I, I got a place, so mm. here I am. And, uh, yeah, I wouldn't change it. I'm really enjoying CSM. And it's kind of odd because uh, I would, like, hear about CSM through like news articles or it comes up in documentaries you might you know you hear of people like Rachel Whiteread or Alexander McQueen but mm. to actually be there is kind of it's still very surreal yeah. most of the time so no, it is very prestigious yeah like do you, does it live up to your expectations um 
definitely in the ways of like the way um people hold themselves um i think more so obviously like third years mm. um but you kind of there is an air of people like know that they're at a good uni i guess yeah. which is kind of odd but also i think in some ways artists need that like in- encouragement to have that like self confidence and be like I am yeah, that's true. I'm going to put my all into this because if you don't put 100% into your art like it's a lot of money to be spending. Yeah. So um but yeah, I think I think CSM is is definitely known for its fashion department these days and you can definitely tell who are fashion <laughs> students. Yeah, it's like that at my uni as well. Yeah, walking around just like in their like hand made garments and like uh there's a there's an instagram page called that's so csm oh yeah anyone (laughs) that would like to see more of csm fashion it 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 shows you the highlights it can be quite hilarious i was talking to my friend the other day and she's like did you see that person wearing like a a tail chatting to that guy in chain mail i was Mm. like no no i didn't but i i could expect as much yeah (laughs) yeah no i feel like do you think there's kind of a pressure or just something that kind of naturally happens with at uni, like having sort of cliques almost, or like t- being part of a type of like, oh, you definitely do that degree? Um, partly, yeah. I think um, there's there was definitely part of me that you know, I I was like, oh, I'm gonna. I say this sometimes. I'm like, oh, I have, I'm gonna have to f- step up my my fashion game or, uh, you know, just make myself appear more CSM, whatever yeah. that means. Um, but, and also even within my um, my pathway, so within fine art you have different uh, pathways at CSM. We call them 2D, 3D, 4D, 4D plus and XD. Um, and I'm in 2D, which I was saying to you the other day is is called the uh, the boring pathway. Yeah. <laughs> so you sort of you feel like sometimes segregated into your pathway, mm. but I think you just you have to decide whether you're going to let people tell you who you're going to be friends with or like yeah. what defines you. And uh, it's funny because a lot of people in in 2D they'll be like there's this girl who's making a vacuum form uh kind of block of wood that she can then place resin in and make photographs through the resin and there's people doing that want to do ceramics and sculpture like we're not we're not just one thing and i don't think the people in that pathway are one thing either Mm. um and you know xd uh, it basically means socially and politically aware art. But I think everyone can make that sort of art. Definitely. Um, it's just um, the way the courses are, are run. But I guess yeah. you could then get more support in that specific area in yeah, like your workshops. Exactly. Yeah. So 2D is more process-based. And um, there are definitely a, a fair few painters in my course. But um, it, that sort of way of teaching can help anyone really um and yeah so i think the idea that one pathway is better than another is is wrong um or that like one degree is better than another oh for is, sure because yeah that's kind of my experience i've actually switched degree because i was doing uh film practical filmmaking at um, University of Westminster and then I switched over to a course which is kind of like the artsy version which they think like oh well the perception within the university is that it's like oh yeah that's where people don't really do much and it's all very conceptual or whatever and it's like it's easy to get a good grade and actually it's like no you just don't really know what the degree is so you're going to make that assumption so yeah I switched to one called contemporary media practice which is a lot more about kind of using frontiers of media so like VR or making installations but it's, it's also like crossing the boundaries between filmmaking fine art yeah and like animation or sound that like you can kind of like work in any area you want um and it's really interesting 
Yeah, there's there's so many creative degrees out there these mm. days, and I think each of them it's it's more about just um, the way in which you think and broadening Definitely. the way in which someone can be creative, um, and the the creative industry is really big, and so you may take one degree and not actually end up in that one specific sector. Yeah. Um, I don't know, you could take like a graphics uh, design degree and go into fashion or um, become a filmmaker. Like it's it's not clear cut these days. I think it's more about just building you up as a creative individual and um, making you feel confident enough to go out into the world and make your own art. Yeah, because I think that's something as well. Like, I know one of my favourite filmmakers, Lynn Ramsey, she she studied or she did photography a lot before she became a filmmaker. And, and um, you can really tell that in the cinematography of her films. It's like, wow, OK, like, the images in, like, the stills are just really captivating. And that's because of her background. That makes her a richer filmmaker, if anything. It's not like, oh, no, you trained in the wrong thing. You know, yeah. that's not how it is anymore. I think, like, yeah, maybe in the past it was it was more difficult to kind of, like, switch careers, but now it's, it's just so much more fluid, especially in the creative industry. For sure. I was discussing... Um with a classmate the other day that um it used to be that say you're this is like 100 or 200 300 years ago um your father was a blacksmith oh and yeah. you would be a blacksmith yeah. and that was how it was done and the trade would just go down through generations mm. and there's definitely obviously an idea of cultural heritage in that yeah. um but it's not it's not really done these days in that I talk to so many people and I'm like, oh, do you have creative parents or what's your background? Mm. And I'm like, oh, no, my my dad's like a bank manager or my, yeah. like, you know, it's your family doesn't necessarily uh, define what you're going to do in life in the same way that um, my dad took an art degree but then went and did music. A lot of mm. these subjects can correlate to one another and there's no... There's no telling where you're going to go, um, but that can that can be quite fun, and I think you've just got to relax into it sometimes and not worry too much. So yeah, how do you deal with relaxing about it? Because it can be very anxiety-inducing and stressful. <laughs> yes, I think. yeah. Um, I I talk to people a lot when I like my my close uh, friends or my family when I'm getting stressed. I'm always you know FaceTiming someone. Um, I, that's just the way I work. I, mm. I like to, to vent. Um, <laughs> but also, over the last kind of year or so, I definitely did struggle with kind of... I, I struggle to get to sleep because my mind gets so busy. Yeah. Um, so I, I've started doing meditation mm. at night, which has done wonders. Um, and you just... you You have to find different little mechanisms that make your day a little bit easier i i'm quite organized i can be quite hyper organized but then that is me coping with well if i know exactly what's happening when yeah it will seem less stressful whereas some people they don't want to think about that it, they just want to mm. like live in the moment and that's easier for them which is fine um but I think it's always good to be conscious about what your method is or what your habits are as yeah. well, though, because sometimes it's like, oh, live in the moment, just ignore all the things you want to do. And then suddenly the day before your essays due or whatever, it's like, oh, bugger, I haven't done that. Yeah. And if you're aware that that's kind of your normal behaviour, then maybe you can do something about it when it becomes a problem. But also, like, it's, there's really pros and cons, because I'm quite similar to you, like, I find it hard to switch off. And I've started just making one day in my schedule, normally, like, a Saturday or a Sunday, or sometimes, like, in the week. I'll just try and take a whole day. I won't do any work, um, per se. I mean, I'll go to, like, an art exhibition or something, but I'll do it for fun, and it might not be relevant yeah. to, like, my current practice. Um, and I'll like see friends and stuff because as well I think it's quite easy to just be like oh I'm working and even like at the flat here we'll have 
like we'll have friends over but I'll kind of be working in the corner like you know my yeah. housemates friends will be over and we'll, they'll all be in the living room and I'll be kind of there with like a glass of wine <laughs> but I'll still be like working yeah, on something trying to be social so, but also your mind's elsewhere yeah and it's like you're kind of kidding yourself then like you're not really being sociable mm. and it's actually good to because it can be quite an isolating thing sometimes creative um because it's so, so demanding yeah. um, and it can take up a lot of time. Mm. I think one of the things um, that I really appreciate actually is that I'm in private accommodation, which just means I'm in like university, mixed university halls. Um, and that means that I'm with people who don't do creative subjects at all. Okay. And I've made friends with... Uh, a couple of law sh- students and like a nutrition student and obviously it's it's nice because when I um, spend an evening with them I can just like get out of my head a bit and mm. they they think about things in a very different way yeah um, which can sometimes be really useful to just broaden your horizons quite refreshing, like, yeah. yeah it's quite refreshing and it just allows you to um, think of things in a different way and um, I think it's good to not box yourself into only hanging out with a certain type of person. Oh, definitely. So, yeah, I have I wasn't really expecting to benefit from being in mixed halls, apart from that I was like, oh, I, you know, it might be a bit more of an effort to meet people on my course. But taking an art course, you know, we're all in the studio, we all have to interact it's actually quite nice that I can come home and separate from that Mm. and have time to just um hang out with my friends and that not having to be let's let's do some work while we talk no I think it's really healthy to just have a lot of variety because I think it's really easy like sometimes it's helpful to have um kind of your structure or like your schedule and it's routines things that you do consistently because for some yeah. things, yeah, you need that. You need to eat three meals a day. You need to brush exactly, your teeth. Exactly. And, like, you know, it can really help people to have, like, you know, you schedule this amount of time to work and then whatever. But, yeah, ver- having variety, like, you know, like I was saying, having a day a week and just being like, okay, let's just do whatever happens today. Like, what do I want to go and do? And there's so many, like, you know, free exhibitions in London. Yeah, Um it has been, in some ways, overwhelming the amount of exhibitions yeah. there are. But it is so fun. Like, um, I was I was talking to someone today, and I was like, "Oh, I, I don't really feel like I've been to enough exhibitions recently." Mm. And then I stopped, and I was like, "Wait, that's a lie." I went to the National Gallery, the National Portrait Gallery, the Tate Modern, and like the RA, and then the Wallace Collection and two other smaller galleries all last week. And I was <laughs> okay. like, I was like it's just, good, it all yeah. blurs into one. Yeah, um, yeah. But in like the best possible way is that you're just, you're surrounded by so much art that it all kind of like sinks mm. in through osmosis in a way. <laughs> um, you, uh, especially when you're in central London um, areas like Green Park, there's so many tiny little galleries. Yeah. Um, I found this really quirky gallery in like off from piccadilly circus okay. um and i'm now like writing a report on work i've seen there that's cool um but i definitely i definitely want to get out more and um find some like smaller independent stuff uh go into like the the galleries further away from central london yeah, yeah, I'm always a little bit worried that I'll like turn up or like you see the outside of somewhere and think, oh, that that looks cool. But like, am I going to go in and they just want me to like buy stuff? Yeah, you know, it's a little bit awkward. I feel like I have to like dress well that day, <laughs> like have a big coat on some lipstick and be like, hello, <laughs> darling. Like, yeah. And oh. just pretend that you might have the money for it. Uh, yes, I'm here to purchase a two million dollar paint. No, <laughs> never. But um I I actually, funnily enough, in a couple of weeks into staying in London, I um, I had this app that tells me about art openings that are happening that evening. Oh okay, what's that called? Um, I think it's it's Art Rabbit, okay. and um, I just saw this opening of a like little gal- like commercial 
gallery in Green Park. Um, and I should have thought, Green Park, it's going to be yeah. fancy. <laughs> but I was like, you know, I really like the look of this art. I'm just going to go after my dance lesson, <laughs> like in my sportswear. And I turn up and it's all these like rich 20 somethings drinking like Prosecco or champagne um, and not really looking at the work. Oh, um, yeah. And uh, the, the guy at the door is like, Can I take your bag for you, madam? I'm like, Yes, you may. <laughs> but I was just this like little old art student. Uh, kind of a bit of a wallflower just walking around and enjoying the work but also feeling quite amused that I was in some sort of swanky like gallery opening Mm. in completely the wrong outfit. Um, (laughs) I do find that sometimes though you meet really like people that you just know are really rich and they're often creative or like interested in something creative and they will just dress in really shabby clothes and you're like you have money to like yeah you know i mean it's not it's, it's not the all the time. aesthetic these yeah. days yeah so it? you're like maybe you can get away with it yeah <laughs> may- maybe maybe i just look like i was like too rich to care no um <laughs> <laughs> no i think i definitely look like a student but they didn't mind and i kind of want to do it again I, I feel like a little bit of a a sleuth just like walking around yeah, in the shadows. Yeah, that's fine because the thing is, like, no one can tell you you can't be there, and you're probably the one enjoying the art the most. Exactly. <laughs> if everyone else is just thinking, like, you know, talking and drinking their prosecco or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. Although I think next time I need to get there early so I can get some prosecco myself. Uh, but yeah. um, that's good tactics. Yeah, exactly. Because um, that's one tip: art openings. There's often free alcohol. So <laughs> um, again, if you're a student on a budget. It that's, could be a good know, night out. Yeah. That's, like, definitely the kind of night out I prefer to clubbing <laughs> anyway. It's, like, you know, a bit of alcohol, some art, like, way more interesting. Yeah, go with a few friends, have some good conversation, see some nice art. Um, yeah, it, it could be fun. Um, I'm, I'm not really a clubbing person. I'm more of a, you know, pub or night yeah. in watching a film. Um, but just... Doing that on my own was kind of exhilarating. And, um, it, you know, it's something that you don't get to do, like, when you're a small town. Even if you have galleries, they're not going to have, yeah. like, big fancy gallery openings. So I did feel like a, a small mouse in a big city, but it was kind of in the best way. There's so much more to do that you don't kind of make a thing of everything. Like, oh, because often if there's not very many things to do in your area, you would probably know someone who's going anyway, or you make more of a thing of it, like, let's all go together. But it's It's actually really nice to spend time on your own doing stuff, which which you might do with a friend and kind of, like, have a day out. But actually, you know, it's like, spend time with yourself. Yeah, I think growing up... Um, as you said, like in a small area, I um, I was in a little village and then I moved out to the countryside to an even smaller village. Right, yeah. um, you, In some ways you have independence in that your parents aren't worried about you walking to the like park or whatever during the day and there's no mm. kind of fear of, of like danger where you're living because it's very kind of like small and um, inclusive. Um, but also, there is that lack of opportunity to go and do um, bigger things because if you want to go to the cinema or to galleries or this, that, you have to travel a bit further or you have to be able to drive or have to be able to get mm. lifts. And Because um, I know both of us were like, we have to drive as soon as yes. we could when we were hit 17. Yeah. Yeah. But, oh, the bus service was terrible. So bad. <laughs> um, and so I hit 17 four months later I was driving and I was a summer birthday so I was like behind any everyone anyway so I was like I really need to catch up here um but now that I'm in London um it's a different kind of independence that you get Mm. um and I'll meet people who have grown up in London and just decide decided to stay here for uni Mm. um and I'm like god you you must just like be so used to this this is like uh, completely normal for you but I I still get I remember although I've been on the tube before I um I still got kind of giddy the first time I was getting the tube from my flat because I was like I, I just walked out my door and I yeah. popped on the tube I was like how did that happen <laughs> yeah I didn't have to get uh 
drive to a station, get a train up to London, and then hot, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was actually there in the city. And Everything's it was so crazy. much more connected. Like you know, yeah. after this, we could just go into Central and like go to a gallery and stay out until like ten and still get the train home. Exactly. Five. Whereas like in my mind, I'm always like, oh yeah, the last like the last, last train, train home. home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When's and that? It's like, yeah, you can yeah, still yeah. get a night bus or an Uber. Like there's no Ubers where we come from. No, not yeah. many. Like unless you're in the um the main town near us you're not you're not gonna have any hope um so yeah it is definitely a different experience um but you know it does it takes a little bit of getting used to just because i i'm i would be used to coming home and it being quiet and there'd be like no noise Mm. and just like lots of green space and um it's always busy in london um and there's always going to be like an ambulance siren or like yeah. um, somebody like yelling out on the street or whatnot. It's just when there's lots of people in close proximity, uh, it's it's bound to happen. And um, and also, you know, I I definitely was after a few days being like, oh. I'd like to see some more trees, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm quite went... lucky in my area. There's a few trees. Yeah, yeah, you've got a nice a bit area. Out. But um, I went to, I just went to like Hyde Park with a friend, yeah. and it was, it was and lovely. actually, we've got such good parks in London as well. So it's good. like really nice. Like my my boyfriend lives like quite near Elephant and Castle, so really quite close to central London. But it's like Burgess Park's huge and absolutely lovely. Like there's there's so much greenery like loads of people go there and like yeah. do exercise in the summer they have like barbecues in the park oh, like it's so great. nice and it's like quite quite a sense of community there as well yeah it's, it's interesting there's definitely um I think also the further out you go you have your different London boroughs and there's mm. definitely a sense of like there is community within those areas um my cousin has lived in London all her life and um when I moved up to London she kind of met up with me and had a little chat and gave me a bit of a walking tour um of some of the central London areas but she was saying like when she goes home to Hackney like she knows so many people like you can just walk down the street and you'll know people which I wasn't really expecting that you'd have that in such a big city but yeah it happens everywhere really I mean I do feel a bit less connected to people here like if I wasn't at uni yeah um I probably wouldn't really know so many people but I think if I wasn't at uni like there's there's always kind of like different social circles from whatever you're doing like I know tons of people from uni and like a lot of people live in this area um and then you know if I had a job or something then you would then you would know people from that or like you adjust basically. yeah you do and um, I think because sometimes that's the worry like oh I won't make any friends or like I won't I won't find you know like stuff to do like to socialize and it's like you you do just adjust even if you can't really picture it yeah I think sometimes people can have the perception that going to a big city you can end up quite isolated and lonely which I definitely think can be a problem yeah but um I think it's more about the mindset you go in with mm. and if you're just open to talking to new people and you know maybe going out of your comfort zone now and again you can really like it discover new things and and make some some great connections um and there's there's so much to do in like get get your hands on in London so um yeah I think it's it's what you make of it and sometimes it's just having that little pep talk with yourself before you go out being like no I am gonna have fun tonight and and yeah I always find like once you kind of do that once once you force yourself to do something once you're like oh yeah I've done that before like the next time if it's something similar like I really I've definitely done that on numerous occasions to the point where now some of those things I just don't think twice about I'm like yeah that's a thing I do thinking back to last year it's like some of those things I just really that would have been a lot of effort for me then they just aren't now at all and it's really nice to like look back and actually appreciate that because I think everyone's kind of been through those steps and and it's good to appreciate those things and remember like yeah that's going to keep happening with different things that feel more and more challenging and yeah yeah for sure I think I'm obviously still adjusting and there's 
still loads of new experiences but yeah it's just having that um mindset of it's okay like just go for it if if you're feeling like you can but also it's like um yeah it's finding that balance of maybe giving yourself a day where you can just chill Mm. and um and collect yourself um and and I think also there's a there's a pressure around uni as well to have a certain lifestyle or social lifestyle um but I think it's more about finding what suits you and what's comfortable for you yeah definitely Um, and if putting yourself out there doesn't have to be going clubbing like for me um I started doing a contemporary dance lesson for beginners this year and I have no dance background and um it I am quite terrible at points (laughs) and get very confused but it's it's just a laugh and I it makes me um, smile uh, when I mess up rather than like feeling bad about it and that everyone's just really lovely and I think it was just that thing of my f- asking a friend um, if they wanted to go to the taster session and then after that being like yes I do actually want to do this and just sticking mm. with it and it really is just like going to taster sessions like trying stuff out because often they're like free or really cheap and you're like you know it's it's again like one of those things where it's just variety and trying something new and even if you go I hate it I'm never doing that again you can laugh about it and then go like that's just an experience which actually I think you begin to kind of like feel like your mind's kind of broadening yeah. when you do things like that like regularly it doesn't have to be like oh I'm going to try something new every week you know no but just when the opportunity arises if you've got time like or make some time you know and and try a couple of things and and it it will it will definitely like enhance your kind of like life in other areas and make yeah. you make you think more broadly in in ways which you might not even notice but I think if you if you do make the effort to start doing more of those things you do to start to notice it as well and it's like oh wow you know even if it's unrelated it's just kind of like yeah your mindset really yeah I think in some ways like um I, I started my podcast with um honor before uni but Mm. it was it was one of those things where we had an idea but it's that jump to actually being like yeah we're gonna try this and see how it goes um it gave us you know the opportunity to see each other more often and to collaborate on a project um and explore like our relationship as as cousins and as friends in a different way Mm. um and like i'm so glad i did that and also i think having that experience has allowed me to be like yeah there's you you can get involved in different projects and it it can be really fun and inspiring um I was I was just saying to you before we started filming that uh, I've been scouted today to do some modeling um which I have very little experience with but um I did a shoot a few weeks ago for a fashion student and like I had a fan blowing in my face and like <laughs> red spray paint and spray hairspray everywhere and just like they were like yeah just act like you're being birthed from a giant worm <laughs> and <laughs> but, but, but act like... natural and I'm like how <laughs> um so these things they're odd and unexpected and you're kind of like what why why me or how and <laughs> should I be doing this but um it was hilarious and um a good experience so if I can I hopefully can do this shoot but if not you know I'm sure another opportunity like that will come around yeah um yeah I think that we 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 need to wrap up yeah so. our artworks have come to an end yeah <laughs> so is the conversation there but you no. go thank yeah. you for having me oh you're welcome thank you for coming it's been yeah. good and we've made some art we have <laughs> and if you want to see um more art chatty type things um a little bit of self promo you can check <laughs> out the sketchpad pod we're on spotify apple cast um and our, we've got an instagram at the sketchpad pod so yeah definitely go check that out yeah you should yeah <laughs> and listen to the rest of the guac pod i will definitely be listening so yeah, I'm excited to see. to see 
all of the other episodes because yeah if you're new to the podcast we have a pool of hosts or I'm one of three hosts and we all kind of um, interview different people in different fields so I do mainly art and film which is kind of like my field as you can see with ink all over my hands Um, and then yeah we've got um, Milo and Dylan who then focus on other things and have other people who I haven't met so I'm excited to listen to their podcast it's a mystery yeah we're looking forward to it yeah thanks for listening